The Lemonster City Council meeting is brought to you by the generous support of the Service Oil Company, 345R Lancaster Street, Lemonster, 978-466-1922. Relative to amending Chapter 13, Section 13-77 of the Revised Ordinances entitled Stop Signs, to insert the following. FNL Road against southbound drivers at North Street, Atlantic Avenue against northbound drivers at North Street, Primrose Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street, Lake Street against northbound drivers at North Street, Woodsome Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street, Morningside Street against northbound drivers at North Street. Sargent Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street. Cullen Avenue against northbound drivers at North Street. Stewart Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street. McKinley Street against northbound drivers at North Street. Amy Avenue against northbound drivers at North Street. Westminster Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street. Hobson Street against northbound drivers at North Street. Greenwich Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street. Schley Street against northbound drivers at North Street. Elmwood Avenue against southbound drivers at North Street. Beth Avenue against northbound drivers at Debbie Drive. Albert Drive, southwestbound drivers at Central Street. Albert Drive heading northwestbound onto Central Street. <coughs> and further amending by deleting the following. Tanzio Road against eastbound and westbound drivers at Aspinwall Avenue. Graham Street against east and westbound drivers at Central Street. Litchfield Street against southwestbound drivers at Central Street. Willard Street against northeastbound drivers at Lancaster Street. Viscoloid Avenue against southbound drivers at Lancaster Street. Whitney Street against northeast and southwestbound drivers at Mechanic Street. Whitney Street against northeast and southwestbound drivers at Water Street. Lindell Avenue against eastbound and westbound drivers at Merriam Avenue. Washington Street against northeast and southeastbound drivers at Merriam Avenue. Bel Air Heights against eastbound drivers at Old Mill Road. Aspinwall Avenue against northbound drivers at Malvern Street. Johnson Street northwestbound entering Viscoloid Avenue. Johnson Street southwestbound entering Viscoloid Avenue. Day Street against southwestbound drivers at Main Street. North Street against east and westbound drivers at Main Street. Mill Street against westbound drivers at Hawes Street. Mill Street against westbound drivers entering Hawes Street. Park Street against southbound drivers at Monument Square. River Street against northwestbound drivers at Hamilton Street. River Street against southeastbound drivers at Main Street. Nichols Street against northbound drivers at North Main Street. Lindell Avenue against eastbound drivers at North Main Street. Cross Street against westbound drivers at Central Street. And further amending by inserting the following. Bainbridge Street against southeastbound drivers at Willard Street. Graham Street against westbound drivers at Union Street. Gamash Lane against southbound drivers at Grant Street. DeChico Drive against northbound drivers at Union Street. Grant Street against eastbound drivers at Central Street. Research Drive against eastbound drivers at Central Street. Emerson Lane against northbound drivers at Holland Woods Road. Holland Woods Road against westbound drivers at Pleasant Street. Walden Court against northbound drivers at Holland Woods Road. Tanzio Road against northeastbound drivers at Lancaster Street. Tanzio Road against eastbound drivers at Mulburn Street. Bel Air Heights against westbound drivers at Leggett Hill Road. Samoset Drive against southeastbound drivers at Willard Street. 
Spindle Top Drive against Southwest Bound Drivers at Samoset Drive. Ballard Court against Northwest Bound Drivers at Samoset Drive. Nealon Circle against Southeast Bound Drivers at Samoset Drive. Candlewood Drive against Northwest Bound Drivers at Nealon Circle. Candlewood Drive against Eastbound Drivers at Willard Street. Samoset Drive against Northeast Bound Drivers at Candlewood Drive, intersection closest to Willard Street. Candlewood Drive against Southeast Bound and Northwest Bound Drivers at Samoset Drive. This is Legal Affairs Petition 2018, 2318, 2418, 2618, 2718, 3018, and Communication 30. Um, before I go to the public, are there any counselors um, that uh, have anything to say or any questions on this reading? Uh, Council Cormier? Yeah, just just really quickly, it's it's been a while since these have first been petitioned, and I'm I'm sure the city clerk will you know uh, do what she's got to do. But I just want to remind uh, that some of these are just um, not actual um, signs that need to be placed. It's just updating language. But there are a couple of these um, former petition numbers that actually need a sign place. So just make sure those go to the DPW, and and the others are just. Uh, a change in the book, so okay. She'll have to look through each petition to figure any, them out. But okay, any anyone else? Are there any members in the audience who wish to address the council, um, either for or against the uh, um, this reading of the ordinance? Second time, does anyone wish to address the council, either for or against this subject matter? Third and final time, does anyone in the audience wish to address the council either for or against this subject matter? Um, before I close the meeting, uh, Mr. President, I just want to uh, commend Councilor Cormier again. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of work to read, but it was probably ten times the work to put it together. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a good job and uh, good job paying attention to detail. And with that, Mr. President, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you, Thank you very much. John, you want your water? You all good? You good? No, I'm good. You could have timed that better. What's that? So you couldn't have timed that down. Yeah. <laughs> it's off like 30 seconds. Okay, this is a hearing before the Lemonster City Council relative to amending Chapter 13 of the revised ordinances entitled Motor Vehicles and Traffic by inserting a new Section 13-68.1, Bicycle Lanes as follows, in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 89, Section 9 of the General Laws of Massachusetts, the following streets are designated for marked bicycle lanes. North Street, South Side from Lunenburg Town Line, to 100 feet west of Main Street and North Street North Side from 100 feet west of Main Street to Lunenburg Town Line. This is formally Legal Affairs Communication 29. Um, do any members of the council have any questions or comments on this matter? Council Fecker? I just had a comment. So um, my understanding is that this is relevant to the um, mass DOT work that's going to be done on that quarter. And that we, uh, the city of Lemonster, um, is required to have bicycle lanes. Yes, that's um, that's exactly right. All right. So I just wanted to make that clear because I have received a couple of comments from 
constituents that indicated that they, they didn't feel so that road is wide enough for bicycle lanes or need bicycle lanes, but I have, in fact, explained to them that it's a, a requirement, so I just wanted the public to know that. Right, it's a requirement of the Department of Transportation. Uh, any other questions or comments from counselors? Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council either in favor of or against this petition? Second time, does anyone in the council wish to address the council either in favor of or against this petition? Third and final time, does anyone in the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against this petition? Um, <coughs> Any, any counselors have any last comments or questions? Seeing none, Mr. President, I declare the public hearing closed. Thank you. So which ones are they? 40. Mark, congratulations on your book. It's oh, exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it published or what happened? It's out. So it's out. <coughs> when is the uh, C-SPAN event? Do you know? Um, looks like March, uh, March, May 31. Where is it going to be? Manchester, New Hampshire Public Library. Yeah. What's it? What's the date? Is it a weekday? Yeah, I think it's a third. It's a Thursday. Third. Yep. It's awesome. Good. Good. This is petition 40-18, Kristen Kelly, planning director. Amend article 18, section 22-105 of the Lemister Zoning Ordinance to include language regarding recreational marijuana facilities. Um, we have with us tonight the planning director, Kristen Kelly. If you could just introduce yourself and uh, why don't you explain to us or give us a little summary of what's going on. Hello. 
Um, the planning board had a open their public hearing on this matter for um, to they have to give a recommendation on uh, this as it is an amendment to the zoning. Um, they opened the public hearing um, and voted to request that the um, public hearing be continued in the interest of forming a committee, um, a joint committee between the planning board and the city council to review the draft and um, various details of, of the, the um, sorry, I'm not having the words right now, but um, for the, um, the regulations, to understand the regulations better, to ask the right questions of KP law so that we can make sure to get this draft um, uh, as good as we can before approving it. So I. Um, Do you know how how big of a committee they're looking to form? Um, J John Souza offered <coughs> to be on the committee, and Thomas Kerrigan offered to be on the committee, and there's there's maybe a third who may be on it. So um, I, I would, if possible, like number of, of city council members, but that's um, I'm not sure, you know, how that decision gets made. So. Okay. Do you know if they're looking for? Um any input from any other um, boards in the city? Um, not that I know of. The discussion was around between the planning board and the city council. Okay. To have a do uh, do any councilors have any, any questions or comments, Councilor Bedanza? Yeah, I mean, be, it's going to be uh, ultimately in front of the legal affairs committee, so it would seem appropriate that the legal affairs committee be um, involved and maybe maybe part of that joint committee yeah I would think and then we could you know we could schedule it as a subcommittee meeting um, of our body as well as um, the planning board would do the same I think that that makes any sense I mean I'm not adverse to other councils who are interested in being involved but that I know Councilor Frida has got an interest in this I do um, we're both members of legal affairs so it seems to make some sense yeah Councilor Frida do you want to weigh in on that yeah, uh, I did speak at the planning board meeting and asked that we do do something that we could have a consensus of between the <coughs> planning board and the city council. And and I don't think they felt like they had read all the documents and had a lot of questions. And I think um, that's where all it was coming from. I think they have a couple people uh, that I'm aware of that want to be on the committee. Okay. So uh, it would be... A, good give and take and a good discussion about it. All right. Sounds good. Any other counselors uh, want to weigh in or have any questions? Well, just uh, through the chair, how does that convey back to the planning board now? Right. <clears throat> Not really sure how this it will work. Well, we're, but yeah. I think, I think there's a request that this matter be continued. Right. To well, June. Yeah. So I think there's probably going to be some work done between now and June. Yes. I'm happy to coordinate these we, meetings um, yeah we'll need to schedule a, a meeting sooner than later um, yeah because we got a fairly tight time frame yeah. so maybe if the chairman of legal affairs wants to work with Kristen to figure out a date where yeah we can set up a legal yeah. affairs subcommittee and work it with the planning board and, and all meet down here we can start working through it yeah we can do that under new business tonight okay I can schedule something all right that's are there is there any are you going away at all um, in the next month um, don't think I have any plans right now. Um, what what day do they do this legal affairs meet? We January? usually we usually like Wednesday or Thursday, mm -hmm. you know, or an off an off Monday or Wednesday or Thursday has usually been. Okay, Wednesdays aren't great for me, but I don't want this to you know. I, okay, it's not. Well, we'll, we'll try to work around so. that. I'm okay. sure we can. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, uh, is there any member of the public who wishes to address the council? Uh, either for or against petition 4018. Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either for or against this petition? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either for or in favor of this petition? Uh, seeing none, Mr. President, um, we're going to ask that this matter be continued to June 11th. 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. That works, and Kristen, good? That works with you? I think you? I'll be here also. Okay, just oh, checking her availability. Yeah. yeah, June 11th. 
That's fine for me. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. And we'll uh, we'll schedule a subcommittee meeting under new business. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> had a schedule, John. Hmm? You caught up and you had a schedule. <laughs> Rocking and rolling. That's right. They're both going to be on schedule, don't worry. <laughs> That's about to hit quicksand. So what do I do next? About to hit a major roadblock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh.
before the Lemonster City Council. This is petition 33-18. Dean J. Mazzarella changed the zoning of eight lots of land from the Residence B Zoning District to the Commercial Zoning District located along the north side of Mechanic Street and the south side of the unimproved portion of Glendale Street and also the unimproved Milton Street and adjacent portion of Glendale Street. All is shown on a plan entitled Plan to Accompany Petition for Zoning Change, Lemonster, Mass. Prepared for Dean J. Mazzarella, dated January 10, 2018, by Whitman and Bingham Associates, LLC. Uh, this hearing has been continued from April 23, 2018. Uh, the petitioner and, uh, and your, your agents, you want to come on in? Yes. Okay. While you're getting started, I'm just going to read a couple of letters into the record. Um, we got a letter dated um, All right, I'll get to those. We got a letter dated May 9th, 2018 uh, from Kristen Kelly, Director of Planning and Development. Dear Ms. Bouchard, at a regularly scheduled planning board meeting on May 7, 2018, the planning board voted unanimously to recommend approval of the above reference petition. Rezoning the indicated area would be in keeping with surrounding uses, including an abutting bank and a gas station. Commercial land uses most often require site plan approval and or special permit approval which allows the planning board to approve site-specific details such as traffic, parking, landscaping, and snow removal. The approval process provides oversight and a public forum for discussion. Please contact me with any questions or concerns. Sincerely, Kristen A. E. A. Kelly, Director of Planning and Development. Like the first day of school. Yeah. Mr. Mazzarello, I've got, in this one file, I've got what I think are four, four letters. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to circulate the copies? I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay. I just want to make sure. It's up to you. I mean, I gave them to you. I no, mean, I can you just want to take care of that. Yeah. Submit ones at a time. Yep. One might not have copies to them. Yeah, there's one that I'll read. So I'll I'll read these in uh, into the record real quick. We have a letter dated May 14th, 2018. Uh, this this is one where there is no copy available. Uh, esteemed City Council members, I'm writing to speak in favor of the lots located on Mechanic Street to be zoned commercial, and to speak favorably in regard to the pros project to be built there. First, I'd like to say a few words about the property owner slash property project developer. 
This is a man who has spent his entire adult life investing in our city. This is not someone who is just out to make a buck, build a project, and run out of town. He spent the last 35 years protecting and serving our community with unparalleled passion and energy, looking out for the needs of the community over his own. You would be hard-pressed to find anyone who cares more, spends more time, or works harder to make Lemonster a great place to live. This man bleeds blue. Years ago, when downtown was looking like a ghost town, this property owner rented a storefront and moved his flag business there and also opened up a gift shop to encourage others to invest in downtown. <coughs> it wasn't what was financially best for him, it was what was good for the city. This is just one example of how he does what's best for the city over what is best for him personally. This is who he is. We can be sure that he will do a good job with this project. Given the area and makeup of the neighborhood, the highest and best use of this property is clearly commercial. It's the gateway to our city. It's one of the first things people will see coming in. We have the opportunity to make it something aesthetically pleasing and beneficial for all by someone who has a proven track record. It will be something nice for the neighbors to look at. It will create traffic breaks for residents on the same side to get out of driveways and to get out of 12th Street and it will create tax revenue benefiting all. Respectfully, Terra Lapis, 286 West Street, Lemonster, Massachusetts. You also have a letter dated May 13, 2018. To whom it may concern. I'm writing in regards to the project on Mechanic Street in Lemonster that Dean Mazzarella is proposing. My house is directly across from this project and I feel that this project will be excellent for the city of Lemonster and its neighbors. As I gathered all the facts, I would like to remove my name from a petition that I signed prior to knowing all the information. Any questions, feel free to contact myself or my son, Rob Daniels. Sincerely, Judith T. Daniels. It's also signed by Rob Daniels, 417 Mechanic Street, Lemonster, Mass. We have a third letter. Good morning. My name is Justin Matigrill, and I am a homeowner, taxpayer, and a butter to the property on Mechanic Street, and I am wholeheartedly in favor of the proposed rezoning. That property has sat stagnant for decades, and it would be nice to see something developed that will better the city and our neighborhood. Last year, just 100 feet or so away from Dean's property, Cumberland Farms was built. We have no complaints about its existence, nor have we heard about any negative impacts to our neighborhood. In fact, none of the folks who have spoken out against the Mechanic Street rezoning questioned or publicly spoke out against the development of that gas station. No petitions, no residents coming from miles away to deliver their concerns for traffic and the like, nothing. I have an idea as to why they have decided to speak out on this particular proposal that is more feet away from the busy that is mere feet away from this busy gas station. I'm certain those reasons are not lost on any of you. So as someone who has an actual interest in what goes on that lot, I am in favor along with the city's planning and zoning boards to rezone Mr. Mazzarella's Mechanic Street property. Thank you for your consideration. Regards, Justin Matigro. And we have another letter dated May 13, 2018. Um, this is from Nathan Fontaine uh, of 449 Mechanic Street, Lemonster, Mass. This letter is to take my place as I cannot attend the City Council meeting due to career commitments. Dear City Councilors, my name is Nathan Fontaine and I live at 449 Mechanic Street in Lemonster, Mass. I'd like to show support for Dean Mazzarella request to rezone his lot that is across the street from my property for good reason as well. Lemonster is a growing city. You can see new construction projects popping up showing that Lemonster is thriving and growing city. Most rezones go through without a hiccup. The new Cumberland Farms on Mechanic Street that went through without any opposition and is a very busy and thriving business that does not cause any problems. But now that a political figure is showing interest in rezoning, it's on the front page and it's become a problem, in my eyes, it's politics. Some site safety, others site traffic, but living there for three years, I've never seen a car accident, nor had a problem driving down the street due to traffic. A flag store isn't going to cause a traffic jam or more car accidents. A flag store with offices in it would be great, more jobs for Lemonster and a better economy. 
What I fear is that the rezoning doesn't go through. The lot is then sold to a developer and is used to build a condominium complex or other residential buildings, which let's make clear is already zoned for. Next, the city council will have no say over its development and having more pedestrians in the area or playing outside on a busy main street. Doesn't seem like the better option. Let's see to it, Lemister's economy continues to grow. Thanks for hearing my statement, although I cannot attend, doesn't neglect the fact I love my city and only want the best for the residents and our future gener generation. Sincerely, Nathan Fontaine. Okay, I think that's it for the letters. Um, Mr. Mazzarelli, you want to yes. proceed? And again, as I said at all the meetings, I'm here representing myself as the owner of the property. I'm not here as an elected official or anyone else. So I'm going to just bring you through real quick. So what we did is we sat down and um, put together all the questions that people had, both at the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, neighborhood meeting, um, city council, the last city council meeting, and then the planning board meeting. So people said, well, what might it look like? Well, those are the best two pictures I can give you. It's going to really have a colonial look to it. might not be a two-story building, but you can see this dorm is on the top, has pillars in the front. And um, the one to the left is per probably a good example because it'll, it'll be well landscaped, well lit, plenty of flag poles, plenty of lighting posts. Some of the products that we sell will integrate into the project, but that'll give you a, uh, an idea at least of what that building might look like, so you have a visual. History of my interest, I think we went through this, but basically um, 190 was coming. Uh, it was a letter from the planning director at the time saying, City of Lummis to get ready. Mechanic Street and other areas are going to be busy places, and you should get ready for it. In fact, one of his recommendations at the time was to make Mechanic Street a one-way going into town and make Spruce Street coming back out of town uh, another one-way. Anyway, those are some of the things that uh, came up at the time. Uh, since that, as you know, we've had uh, IC Credit Union uh, built, Fidelity, um, Fidelity Bank headquarters, Cumberland Farms, the Mall of Whitney Field. Um, crossroads is, is um, two, two big buildings and other buildings going up, another one in front of that, about 9,000 square feet under construction um, as we speak. It took me a number of years to assemble all those. They're all little, small, 100 by 100 lots, 80, you know, the old non-conforming lots. Um, actually, before I merged some of them together, there were total between Glendale and here, there were like 20-something lots. <laughs> And they're all non-conforming, so you could build on each one of them. So there, have been, there could have been 16 to 20 houses there built on individual lots, um, very small lots, consistent with what's there. I didn't do that. Um, pay taxes over the last 30 years, so some people might say, well, it wasn't a very good investment, right, over the last 30 years. But, um, you know, I got attached to the property. Um, it's a project that I wanted to do uh, when my kids got older and a project that I wanted to do um, a little bit different than other projects that have been done in the city. And again, it's the gateway to the city. Um, what we propose is an excellent landscaping plan, uh, neighbor appropriate, neighborhood appropriate, um, clean and maintain business. Uh, all applicants will be screened. Um, so again, I'm a local guy, I've been here all my life. I'm gonna have an opportunity to decide what project goes there, what it looks like. I have my name on it, people always remember that's my project. Um, I think as I stated last time, there were some questions about the property that I own up top, known as the Gagney property. Those are two commercial lots, and I said, haven't even thought about that. It's not part of this plan. Um, one of the concerns from the director about is, was and continues to be, and I think it was brought up at the last council meeting, about is that um, road going to be abandoned, or is it a road that can't be built on, therefore might that road go through? And I just want to reiterate and state again, uh, there's no intentions or plans at all to have um, Milton Street go all the way through to Glendale. There'll be no, uh, to another question that came up, there'll be no access between my property and the credit union. I think people worry about maybe people taking a shortcut and cutting through there. So no, there will be, not be any connection between the properties. There'll be landscaping between the property. Um, the project will not affect the American Little League. This is down at the bottom of Mechanic Street. It's a good couple hundred feet away to the field, so it'll have no impact at all. There'll still be a road that rides up to the back of city property that if for some reason the city wants to grant access to it or use it, they can continue to do so. Buffer zones from the neighbors. Um, 
under submitted plan with the uh, building closest to the IC credit union. So the building will be as close as we can get to the IC credit union, leaving all that area um, as open. And again, I think what we, what we said in the past is the first meeting we had with neighbors a couple of years ago, the, we were proposed to make it an 18,000 square foot project. We've cut back to 14. And, um, you know, that's the maximum of the project. I think I didn't touch on that last time. That's the maximum. That's the maximum that we would put there. It's quite possible that we'd end up with, with less than that, less parking space. But again, I wanted to be up front and um, show you the, the, the greatest potential or the biggest project that we would put there. <laughs> Um, I, I've submitted to you an um, analysis of the traffic information that's available there, um, showing that there's breaks in traffic, and that's when people would go in and out. Interesting enough, I think one of the residents of Mechanic Street was speaking to um, how much traffic goes down, and there's very little uh, in terms of breaks, and all this traffic coming down. So I went up and sat and can do the same. You'll find that in the morning, in some hours of the day, traffic coming off the connector there's more traffic turning left up onto Old Mechanic Road than there is continuing past this property. But anyway, you can look at the traffic analysis there. Um, they took a look at all the traffic reports that are there and gave you, a, 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 I think, a pretty substantial report based on a preliminary. We haven't even gone to the pl uh, planning board with a concrete plan yet. Project is self-contained. There'll be no parking lots across the street. People won't be crossing the street at all. It'll be self-contained for parking, lighting, et cetera. The tax benefits, the city, uh, I think we all know the city's going to grow. There isn't much room for residential development. The city's going to grow on small business and, and commercial industrial is really where the growth is for the city. So it clearly has a tax benefit. Um, this is another question I was asked, you know, what would you do, especially by the neighbors? Um, what would you do? Uh, well, what could go there? Uh, you could put five homes with five driveways. You could do five duplexes with ten driveways. Or you could do a 40B project. I've had a number of real estate people say to me, you know, what? You know, that's kind of a high risk to put homes there. If you put homes, if you put duplexes, um, looked, wait, did a cost analysis of what it would take to, what, what would you have to sell these units for? You're between 239 and 259 per unit if you built uh, ten uh, units or five duplexes. So, you know, the, the question is, you know, is that a high risk? Would people be willing to pay that in an area that most deem a commercial area? Just to look back, uh, mission statement, the the Zoning Ordinance, to encourage the most appropriate use of the land throughout the city to preserve and increase the city's amenities and to encourage the orderly expansion of tax base utilization, development, and redevelopment of land. Zoning history of the parcels. Um, I know the lettering gets a little small, but if you look back, the city hired VHB to look at zoning, and it was pretty much to look at zoning places like Pleasant Street, where there are buildings there that you couldn't put a dance studio in it. It was a form of factory, multi-story. You couldn't put a, a, a gym there. You couldn't put any small business there. Uh, we looked at Central Street. The city looked at Mechanic Street, Merriam Ave, a couple other locations in the city. And VHB, after a number of city meetings, came back with recommendations um, on some zoning changes. There were 12 meetings held with city staff, six public me meetings held with zoning working groups. Public forum uh, was held September of 2008, public information uh, meeting in April of 2009. Then discussion with Legal Affairs Committee um, and the Lemonster September and November of 2009, and then January of 2010. In February of 2010, the planning board stated that the uh, uh, starts the the series of zoning uh, eight. Uh, I'm sorry, zoning eight public meetings uh, in May of 2010. Planning board announces the final draft of the zoning with Mechanic Street overlay district in the commercial uh, in the commer up to commercial road. So they took Mechanic Street and said, let's make all of this. And there was some debate about making of both sides or one side said, let's make, it's only right, make Mechanic Street um, a mixed, uh, Mechanic Street overlay district all the way to Commercial Road. So that was the recommendation in 2010. In September of 2010, the City Hall staff completes internal review of the zoning, and then in October of the same year, Planning Board finishes a series of public meetings. In May of um, 12, the Council hires a consultant for bi-monthly meetings to review the zoning. Eight meetings took place in 2012 before the zoning was changed. 
on that parcel continued to be, again, my property still in 2012 was recommended to be changed to mixed use uh, to the Mechanic Street Overlay District. August 6th of 2012, the zoning document remained from Whitney Street to commercial on Mechanic. <laughs> and again, October 16th, zoning documentation changed to Whitney Street to Ain Street. So at the city council meeting, while it sat for four years, being recommended that be part of the Mechanic Street Overlay District, it was pulled up at the last meeting. There were, if you look back, there were over 40 discussions, 28 public meetings, and again, the very last meeting, um, it was pulled out from 7th Street down. Here are the allowable uses in the residence space. So this is what you can do by right. So I can pull a permit tomorrow, come in with a uh, site plan and a building permit and uh, with a set of plans. I can put a daycare center there. I could put a daycare center there, government buildings, could put a church, a bed and breakfast, single family houses, duplexes, funeral homes, or home offices. Now, if I go in for a special permit for residence B, you could put assisted living, medical facilities and office, apartments, boarding lodging, townhouses, wireless communication facility, and uh, commercial greenhouses. Now, if, if you look at Mechanic Street, all the way down to 7th, what is the Mechanic Street Overlay District? What can you do by right? So this means you can go down to Mechanic Street, both sides of the street, and these are the things that you can put there by right. So you just come in with an engineered plan, and these are the things that you could put with no special permit. You could put a library or museum, you could put a bank, you could put a business or professional offices, you could put a copy shop, you could put a health club, a restaurant, or a retail store with no special permit, just by coming in here on Mechanic Street and pulling a permit with a set of plans, you can do all those things by right. Uh, with a special permit, you can do indoor recreation, motor vehicle service stations, gas stations, mini marts, car washes, restaurants with takeout, public utility buildings, and convenience store. And again, um, none of these are allowed on my property. It's the last buildable lot on Mechanic Street, and none of these things are allowed by right or by special permit. But um, we'll go to the next slide here. Dean, can I just interrupt you yes, for a second? How how would you what you how how would you classify the use that you're intending at this point? I would say, as I suggested last time, a light commercial. So I'm looking to do either. And I don't know the I don't know the percentage, but commercial and retail. So not a drive up window, Dunkin' Donuts or fast food, a gas station, any of those things. It's really and I don't know because no one wants to sign on the dotted line unless they know the zoning is properly, but it could be medical, could be just office, could be I could end up using it all to be honest with you. I don't know that yet. And your your use would be um a small retail in an office. It would be That's retail. Fair. I don't know the combination of the retail. Out of 14,000 square feet, I put that, what I put down there, the percentages, are just an example, you, so you can see how much parking re, would be required mm. for each. So I kind of split them up so you could see, well, if it was this, was this much retail, you need this much parking. If it was this much um, office, it would, it would be this. But it won't be a gas station, it won't be a car wash, it won't be any of those things. It'll be a combination of retail and commercial. Okay, sorry to interrupt. So I would classify it as light, as light commercial. Uh, the overlay district was established to enhance business maintenance and growth while preserving the integrity of the adjacent residential neighborhoods with emphasis on aesthetics. If you remember, there were some trade-offs. If you look at the zoning, there were some trade-offs. It said, okay, we're gonna allow you to do these things, but you can't change the integrity of what happens here. You can't put like neon signs and, you know, really make it like heavy commercial, like Route 9. You can't do that. And there were some trade-offs for that. I can't read that because it's, I'll read it from my presentation here. Do I have that anything? The sand pit and all the other properties from Whitney Street to the connector were originally included in the overlay district by VHB and the zoning work, uh, group and remained there for four years until properties after 8th Street were taken out right before the final um, vote, before the final zoning ended up getting approved. So again, 
I was taken out, and mine's probably the one that's most applicable to all of those uses. And so you could come in and buy two of the properties on Mechanic Street and do any one of those things, as long as you don't go more than, I think it was 100 feet back or 150 feet back. But I don't want to spend too much time on that. I think I made my point. So again, you can go to any one of those. Any one of those properties, and you could do all of those things without any kind of a permit. Just come in and pull the building permit, submit your plans, and off you go. Anthony, you want to take these? So there was concern. There was concerns that came up regarding seven lots versus eight lots, um, and I believe we touched upon it at the last the last hearing. But to, to reiterate, um, at the time the petition went in, <coughs> there was a confusion whether it was eight lots or, or seven. When I originally put the petition together, looking at some of the the assessors maps that we had, uh, it showed there was eight lots. And so when I originally put the petition together, I put it in as eight lots and listed those eight lots. Through the assessor's review and the doing the butters list, they noticed that, well, one of the lots no longer exists because it combined to a lot adjacent to it. So they merged and became one lot. So I took the reference to that specific lot off of the petition, but unfortunately I neglected to change the first sentence of the petition where it said rezone of eight lots and change that to seven before it got filed uh, with the city clerk. So that started some of the confusion. And then unfortunately, on the zoning plan that we had originally submitted, I had an errant arrow that pointed out into space towards a city limits to parcel adjacent to the ball field. Again, unfortunately, I led to confusion on what was being rezoned. But in all of those, there was a thick black line that shows what area was being rezoned, which has never changed. And the parcels listed in the petition and on the plan never changed. It was, it was the seven parcels listed there. It also includes portions of Milton, uh, Glendale, and Camp <coughs> Street. Um, and so you know, those, those parcels were combined you know, a few years back, I think it was probably believed because, as Mr. Maswell mentioned, a lot of those lots were undersized, so when you have undersized lots together, they end up merging. And again, the, the project boundary remains the same as originally submitted um, from the original filing. And what I did pass out before we got going was some updated information. So we updated that, that zoning plan. Um, I submitted a large copy and then also some 11 by 17s to make it easier if you wanted to open it in front of you. On that plan, again, boundary line never changed. Updates that plan included uh, updating the abutters on that to correct uh, the purchase of the Gagney property that was discussed before. Also another butter across Mechanic Street, updated that abutters information. Got rid of the errant arrow. Uh, and then also I believe there was a request to summarize the area uh, breakdown of each parcels. And I put that table right on the plan so it's, uh, it's clear on that, the area breakdown of each of the parcels in question. That's in the, the top right hand corner of those plans. So the new, uh, the new total square footage is 75,873? Correct. That's correct? Okay. Yes. And again, that table, you know, <laughs> summarizes each parcel, but then also portions of Glendale Street, Mechanic Street, and Milton Street. Yeah. And again, this is a, an excerpt from the petition that was originally submitted and specifically listed the seven parcels that were intended to be part of this rezone. Um, and so it was, it was specific in there and, and on the plan. So there's a question about spot zoning and um, where spot zoning arises where there's a zoning change is designated solely for the economic benefit of the owner of the property receiving special treatment and is not in accordance um, with a well-considered plan for public welfare. So you have a residential neighborhood and all of a sudden somebody slaps a, you know, wants to change the zoning in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, some of the property, a small piece of the property is already zoned commercial and we abut commercial property. So it's, it's not spot, spot, it's spot zoning. Factor one for determining spot zoning is the requested use of the zoning significantly different from the surrounding area. And I think you'd have to sort of agree with me that based on what's 
um, east of there, it's pretty much all commercial between a wastewater treatment plant, um, a gas station convenience store, um, a bank, and um, a four family, uh, a six or an eight family. Um, it's pretty consistent with the area. Adjacent commercial properties, again, I just listed them. Again, there's some pictures of those. Less than an eighth of a mile is the mall, is the treatment plant. Um, future development, the city, plenty of documentation, the city's been marketing um, that property, 30 plus acres for, um, we've looked at minor league baseball teams, a golf course, hotel complex, um, you can go to the next slide. And uh, a stadium and a hotel proposal was uh, something that the city was working on uh, back in 2007. It was very public. There were no petitions against it. Uh, the neighbors weren't, uh, there were some concerns, but there wasn't a rally of opposition. That would bring thousands of people to Mechanic Street from all sides, from the connector, from Mechanic Street East and West, Old Mechanic Street, from the mall. Ball field proposal. As recently as 2013, when we almost had a uh, ball, ball, uh, ball, uh, baseball complex uh, looking to come here, and again, um, we're talking thousands of cars. Again, nobody spoke in opposition uh, at any of our meetings. That's all public information. Lemister offers 400 acres to Amazon. Again, that's not a secret. Those were all uh, that was all open to the public. A number of people had asked for. Um, for copies of this, a number of newspapers across the country wrote about this. It was on all the news stations. So again, um, this is the 30-acre capped, land, capped landfill area that uh, we were offering to, to the city of Lumberston was offering uh, for their headquarters. Factor number two in determining spot zoning is, um, is the, requ the requested amendment consistent with the community planning documents? Yes. Again, in 2009, Gateway Plus Action Grant uh, report laid out a series of tasks to improve the east side, including elimination of zoning contradictions on Mechanic Street Corridor and then the Mechanic Street Overlay District. Uh, Mechanic Street is listed in the Comprehensive Economic <coughs> Development Strategy, doc, doc, Strategy Document for the Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Infrastructure improvements on Mechanic Street from the intersection of Laurel Street to the connector. Project description, implementation of project consisting of the replacement of existing um, infrastructure, supporting job growth in downtown in the Mechanic Street corridor. That's all some of the reasons that we're able to get um, some of the grants that paid for all that work for those very reasons. Factor number three in determining spot zoning. Will the use of the district benefit only one landowner? No. Mechanic Street serves as the gateway to the city. Improvement to the parcel will benefit the entire corridor. Uh, given the adjacent commercial developments, commercial is the highest and best use of this property and will bring additional tax revenue to the city. Traffic. Plenty of sight distance to the east and west. Cumberland Farm Study in 2015. Um, put a convenience store and gas station there. It was estimated to uh, generate 33 trips uh, entering and 32 exiting during weekday peak hours. At 20 entering and 20 and 18 during uh, Saturday and midday peak hours. These increases represent, uh, on average, one additional car every two and a half to 15, two and a, uh, 2.5 to 15 minutes uh, during peak hours. These increases in traffic on adjacent roadways are not expected to have a significant impact. That was in the Cumberland, re, uh, uh, Cumberland Farms report. <coughs> Mass DOT road traffic study that came up last time by one of the city councilors, made reference to the possibility that this had some impact to it. This is specific to the intersection. We contacted MassDOT. This is specific to the intersection of Nashua Street and the connector. All proposed intersection improvements are limited to the specific intersection. Speed was found to be an issue coming off of Route 2 and 190 prior to the connector and prior to the intersection of Mechanic Street and Commercial Road. The study only included the Nashua Street connector intersection and not the west of Commercial Road uh, signalization intersection. What was happening is people are coming off Nashua Street, they're taking that right to come down the connector, people are looking, aren't stopping, people are stopping in front of them, and they're crashing. So it's got a high crash 
uh, incidents of high crash at that particular intersection, and that's why that road safety audit was done in 2016. And if you've seen, they're out there with surveyors mocking the area out because they're going to change that intersection around. But it had nothing to do um, with west of, um, of Commercial Road. Green International Analysis, MassDOT study has virtually no relevance for conditions on Mechanic Street in the vicinity. Based on the Cumberland Farms analysis, it is clear that the study area roadways can accommodate additional growth in the, in the future. Based on the Institute of Traffic Engineers trip generation report, specialty retail and office land uses estimate 22 vehicles trips were made for the weekday peak hours and Saturday midday. Compared to the Cumberland Farms development and the proposed development at 398 to 416 Mechanic Street would generate peak hour trips of 52 to 75 percent lower than Cumberland Farms development. The Cumberland Farms study concluded that the development had no significant impact on area intersections and roads. The 398 to 416, which is my project, would not be blocked by uh, que uh, queued traffic and the project would not have a significant effect on Mechanic Street traffic. So um, one of the concerns by one of the neighbors way down on the other side of Mechanic Street was, well, this is going to continue all the way up Mechanic Street. So if you take the same amount of land that I own and replicate that going west of my land, it would cost you one point, uh, roughly $1.4 million to buy those properties to be able to do anything with. So that's your starting point is you have to spend $1.4 million to buy all those properties or enough properties that would be com comparable to, to, to my property. So I think that addresses that. I doubt anybody's going to come in and buy up all those properties, and that sprawl will continue on Mechanic Street. If it continues, it'll be from 7th Street on, because it's already zoned for that. So maybe it won't continue on beyond, the, the, beyond west of here, because it's not zoned for Ms. Mechanic Street Overlay District. It stops. But from 7th Street on, both sides of the street, all the way to downtown, it can be. Other recently approved projects, New England Farms on Central Street, this is uh, right at the corner, across from CVS. That zoning change started in 2017 from Resident C and Business B to Commercial. That was right here at the City Council. Hearings in the winter and spring, 2017. No residents spoke against the project. Council voted 7 to 1 in favor of the project. 81% of the abutting properties were residential. Property size is 45,000 square feet. Um, the proposed gas station, car wash, convenience store with fast food and a drive up through window is what ended up happening there. It's the project that's most comparable to my project that I can find that's most recently where the council zoned to change, um, the, the, uh, voted to change the zoning where it, it, it directly abutted. And you can drive down there now and see how close those houses are. And again, nobody spoke in opposition. Cumberland Farms special permit before the City Council, 2016. No members of the audience spoke for or against the project. Uh, the project was approved 8-0 to zero by the City Council. Approval process, the project uh, has been to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, two neighborhood meetings, and the City Council hearings. If zoning change is approved, the project still needs site plan approval from Planning Board. And the neighbors will be involved in the entire process. So that's dictating if there are air conditioning units, where those might be, lighting, every aspect of the project, they will be involved. The project has, um, okay, we'll go to the next slide. Um, there was a Facebook, this is was circulating around social media, that after something is built, I can sell it and it could be something, uh, it could simply become something else, like a gas station or anything else. That's not true at all. Site plan approval is required. A site plan approval from the planning board is required when a new use or an expansion of an existing use will result in any one or more of the following conditions. 10 or more parking spots, an increase of parking spaces of 25% or more, the creation of 10,000 square feet of new gross floor area on a single lot, more than one, more than one on a building lot, any business that utilizes a drive through window or or uh, a facility or change, or the change of use in classification on the lot. All those things would have to go back. So even if the building is built and there's a business in there and it didn't generate, you know, the, it was office and then suddenly we wanted to turn it into something that was going to generate a lot more traffic that required more parking, it would have to go back to the planning board for site plan approval. 
another myth, there will be a uh, there will be a public notice request, but no direct notification to the homeowners living near the mayor's property. I didn't put that in there. I didn't put the word mayor. That was uh, somebody's uh, quote in Facebook. He is doing this at the last minute, keeping it under the radar similar to 2012. Residents were notified by mail, twice by me. I've had two neighborhood meetings. Um, I have uh, made myself available to all of the neighbors at any time one-on-one -on -one when they came to see me and explain what I was going to be doing. And that's been since the life of the project. When I've had conversations with almost every neighbor down here, and some people have sold and other people have come in. Bless you. I attempted again to rezone in 2012 after finding out that after four years of the property being in mixed uh, Mechanic Street Overlay District, it was changed back to residential with no notification of public hearing. The thought of another street going through French Hill Milton Street will not be a Milton Street will not be a throughway as part of the project. It could be a bookstore or flower shop for a year, and next it could be a fast food restaurant, a video store, a pot shop, an adult novelty store. That's not I explained all that. But Milton Street will not continue through. Um, I think everybody's driven by the elevation is so high you couldn't run a road through there. You know what I want to. The project's going to have my name on it. I hope we've addressed all the concerns. This is certainly isn't the last step. It's only the beginning. If approved, again, it'll have to go through a full site plan approval of the planning board. And again, I think Anthony touched on last time, uh, extensive site work uh, would have to be done on this site. Um, I think I shared from day one with everyone. It was never my intentions. I did residential development at one time. When I was done my last project, I had the opportunity to go here and build on it and be done with it. I didn't. I held on to it since uh, I think we finished it in 1986 and did some more houses after that, but pretty much when I took office as mayor 25 years ago, I stopped uh, all my residential development at the time. I stopped completely. And uh, so it sat there for the last you know 25 years easy. I could have developed it, could have sold it. Um, Novacor had an option to buy it, to put an office building on it at the time, circulating with city councilors, planning board. Everyone was in, in favor of it, thought it was good for the city, it was a good location, kept that business in town. So um, all in all, um, at the end of the day, I, I think I've said to everybody, I won't do, and it's not a threat or anything, and please don't take it as that, is I have no interest in doing any kind of residential development down there. No, it's not the best use of the property, it's some risk involved because of the prices that you'd have to sell it for in an area that really is commercial. <coughs> And uh, I just want to be open and clear on that, that I will sell the property and somebody else will do it because it won't have my name on it. It's not the right thing to do. It's why I held on to it for 30 years. I had plenty of opportunities to, to develop it um, as residential, and I didn't do that. Probably wasn't a really good financial investment for me, but I got attached to it, and I really want to make sure I do the right thing. Any questions? Anthony, did you have any all right, well, why don't I go to uh, legal affairs first. Council Frieda, any questions? Is it possible you can shut that off now? I just yes. back so we can see. Okay. <coughs> you good for now? Mm -hmm. this is, you don't need this, right? No, thank you. Come on. Appreciate it. This is what goes to the Just for a point of information before we begin the hearing, um, the public forum is scheduled for 715. Obviously, that will be delayed. However, at 730 sharp, uh, we will recess for a moment from the hearing if it's still going on at that point. We have to, by law, begin the city council meeting. Uh, a couple things we have to take care of, and then we'll get right back to it. Um, I also want to let you know, <coughs> excuse me, uh, lots of colds going around. There will be no deviation from the agenda this evening. It's very aggressive, and we have a lot of work to do, so we're going to follow it step by step. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Frieda deferred at this point. Councilor Bedanz, any questions or comments? I, I don't have any questions. Okay. 
Uh, any other members of the city council have any questions or comments at this time? Councilor Cormier? If I may, and I'm not sure if you're able to, to answer this for me, the Mechanic Street overlay, do we, was there a specific reason this specific property was taken off of that? The council at the time, nobody showed up. Not, not, and you can check, this is all public information. No one, nobody from the public showed up and said they didn't want this, these lots included. At the last meeting, the last couple of meetings, I think the ward councilor, and I don't want to speak for the councils that were here, maybe you have a better description, but from my recollection, he said that there was some, you know, people didn't want uh, mixed, uh, the Mechanic Street Overlay District down to, to that lot. And none of them showed up. I mean, there were no letters, nothing. That was based on his hearsay. And I think that the other councils respected his, you know, said, well, you know, I mean, that's your ward and respected his opinion on that. But um, that's my recollection of it. I, I didn't, there was anybody that showed up at all those public meetings. It's all public information. Nobody spoke against or spoke and said, we need to remove this lot. But again, the rest of Mechanic Street, both sides, there was some talk about one side versus the other. Both sides of Mechanic Street, up until 7th Street, are mixed, uh, the Mechanic Street Overlay District, then it stops at 7th Street. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Feckley. I just have a comment. Um, uh, Mr. Mazzarella, at the last meeting, um, I asked you if the building would be a one-story building, and you said it would, but yet tonight <coughs> you have the issues of two-story buildings. No, I think I said at the beginning. I didn't want to confuse. I just want to show you it's a colonial look. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I didn't include in here is that what we've done is we've given kind of a couple options. One of the issues was, well, this paper road, and I don't want the paper road to stop anybody from changing the zoning on this thing. If the paper road needs to be eliminated in the sense, the paper road belongs to me. This is not a city road that was laid out or anything. The paper road, I own both sides of it. It's a paper road. And, it, and so if it's an issue, then what we've done is we've recalculated everything, just said, okay, we're just gonna leave that and then, um, and then we'll just recalculate, move the wall back a little bit to gain our parking spot. End of story. Just take it out. But legally, and it's been told to me by two different lawyers, it's my property. I own half on both sides, and that road isn't going anywhere. It isn't stopping anybody from getting to the field. It isn't stopping me from getting to my land on the other side, the city from getting to their land. So um, it, it's not proposed. It's not our intentions to build a two-story building. Um, if the neighbors said, listen, we'd like a little bit more of a buffer, you want to put a two-story building? I might consider that, but honestly, it's being proposed as a one-story. I just showed you that as an example of the colonial look to it. We're trying to achieve that sort of look. So if you went to Freeport, Maine, when you look at Dunkin' Donuts, it doesn't look like a Dunkin' Donuts. You know, they made everybody. Or you go to Sudbury and some of those places. It has a colonial look to it. That's what I was trying to, to okay. point out. Okay. So the plan is not to put a two-story building. Councillor Shalafu Zephyr. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just want to um, talk about the Mechanic Street Overlay District. I'm looking at the zoning um, document on my phone because I think it's a little bit confusing. And I just want to read a little bit about the Mechanic Street Overlay District that I believe came into a being in 2012. So, um, and I'll just read from it. The Mechanic Street Overlay District, this is section 22-31. The purpose is to enhance business maintenance and growth, business maintenance and growth, while preserving the integrity of adjacent residential neighborhoods. Number two, to promote revitalization. Number three, reduce conflict caused by incompatible development. Then there are some general provisions. There's a lot of detail. There are some exceptions, and, um, and then there's some very specific uh, regulations about uh, the Mechanic Street Overlay District. And there are lots of um, uh, protections for anybody wanting to put in a storefront. And, and I was around during this time. I was not on the zoning committee. Um, council Bazanza at the time was not on the city council, but was doing a little bit of work on the zoning ordinance as a consultant. Council Nickel, unfortunately, who is no longer with us, was also on that um, committee, as was Council Lanciani, who's not here, as was the Ward 1 Councilor, who is also not here. I was um, on the City Council at the time, and I do remember participating in those conversations. And I'm confused, and I will double check and go back and, and try to recreate from my own memory, my own notes. I, I can't believe that anything down to the end of Mechanic Street was included in an overlay district that didn't exist. The Mechanic Street Overlay District really did not exist until the final document 
was produced and voted on by the city council. And very specifically, the, um, the Mechanic Street Overlay District was designed to include things like the little cleaners that's on the corner, I think, of 7th and Mechanic. It's a little storefront. It has housing up above it. There's the, um, the little um, market that is on the corner, I think, of Spruce and Mechanic. So it wasn't intended as um, a, a district that would include commercial uses, you know, drive-throughs, big commercial developments. That just was not the intent. And I think in the detail of the zoning ordinance, it makes that pretty clear. So for people in the audience who are listening and thinking about Mechanic Street Overlay District, you can go to the zoning document. And again, it is section, um, I'm going to scroll back here, 22-31. So I just wanted to, um, to highlight that. And my recollection actually during that time is that you requested <coughs> at the time when the zoning board was meeting, the zoning subcommittee, was meeting to have this parcel rezone commercial. And I think there was some conversation, there was some confusion at the time as to whether you were in fact the owner or if it was your son, there was some confusion about who's actually asking for the petition or who's asking for the change. And I think that confusion resulted in that not being uh, moved forward at the time. That's my recollection. And I'll go back through my notes because I attended a lot of those meetings. So I just wanted to make that one point. You have the, I have the transcript of it. And at the end, and so from the very beginning, VHB didn't know me from anybody. They were looking at land use and making recommendations back to the city council and the planning board and to the public. It was pretty obvious to them, and I think at the time, if you look at what the planning director said, Kate um, Brooke said, is this clearly is commercial property. That's the planning director. So the purpose of the, the and I was involved, but the purpose of the, the bringing VHB in was to look at promoting economic development. So if you go to 126 in Framingham, you'll see they did a very nice job through Framingham from, from Route 9 all the way into the center through good zoning to attract good projects. And what it did is it revitalized that whole area that was sort of choppy at the time. So you could do this, you couldn't do that. And what it did is it brought you know professional people in and they did a really nice job. If you drive by, it didn't change the character of the neighborhood. And that's the purpose of what VHB was trying to do, is to come into places like Lancaster Street and Central Street that have like four or five different zonings. And to come in places like Mary Mab. If you remember, somebody wanted to put a health spa or, or, or I guess it was a spa up on Orchard Street. That sort of prompted this all to happen. Change the zoning up to where Attorney, uh, uh, Antonioni is right now. So it had an intent. It was to bring businesses to the city in areas that weren't, weren't allowable. It only made sense. That was the intent of what the mixed use overlay or the downtown or the Merriam Ave or the Central Street mixed use overlay was supposed to do. It was supposed to bring business into the city. I'm not asking anybody to do any special favors. I'm just asking people to look at my lot and, 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 look, and look where it is. It's not on Cumberland Road. It's not on um, you know, Birchcroft Street. It's not in some residential neighborhood. It's in a commercial <coughs> district. And part of the land is already commercial. And the top lots are commercial. It just doesn't make any sense. So the Mechanic Street Overlay District stayed as a recommendation the whole time. For four years, it was recommended that the Mechanic Street Overlay District go from downtown all the way down to, um, to commercial, commercial road. And that was taken out at the last meeting. And I have the transcripts. Okay, I, I'd like to see those because that is not my recollection. And VHB, the city hired VHB to come in and do a zoning study. The zoning document, uh, which did go to the planning department, was in such unusable condition that that's what prompted the city council to appoint a zoning uh, ordinance committee. And uh, Council Dabrowski, Council Frieder, I know that you guys were here during that time. Um, because they did such a terrible job. I don't remember, and I, I'll, I'll go back and I'll find the VHB report, and if it did indicate that a, uh, an overlay district on Mechanic Street should go from downtown uh, down to Commercial Road, I, that's fine. I just want to, I, I, that's not my recollection. And I'll just, um, I, I just want to look at that for myself. But I well, do want to- let, let me just ask you, right? You've been here our whole life. What mm -hmm. belongs down there? Well, I, I wanted to talk there? about that. Yeah. Because I grew up on Holman Avenue which I'm sure you know. And for people in the audience here, Holman Avenue is off of Route 12 in Fitchburg, and right where Happy Jacks is now, you go up that hill, and at the top of that hill up on the left-hand side, that's where I grew up. And when I grew up, 
there was a lot of vacant land, there was a lot of nothing up where Kmart is now. And Route 12 had lots of commercial businesses. Down on the corner where the Tedeschi's is, which used to be the Little Peach, that, that actually used to be a home. The Smith family lived there when I was growing up. Down the street a little bit further, there were commercial um, small businesses. The fruit stand, I'm sure you remember that. Lots of people in the city remember that. So when, when people are talking about rezoning residence B land from residential to commercial, I've been there experienced it, and I'm talking from a place where I understand that there is a need for development, there is a need sometimes to move things forward, but guess what? I understand where the people in the neighborhood are coming from. We ended up getting squeezed. This, was, this is a beautiful little neighborhood, and if you go up Pullman Avenue, you go up Princeton Street, and Leland Avenue, and Abbott Avenue, all those streets still have really nice little homes on them. However, however, over the years of commercial development, that is on the north side of this neighborhood and on the south side, Route 12 side, has really caused a dramatic change in that neighborhood. Talk to people on Nickel Street and talk to them about, you know, people flying down from the Kmart Plaza or people flying down from Route 2 that cut over, you know, to get back to Route 12. So commercial development, it's easy to say that this is a commercial location. Well, guess what? I'm looking at that map. That doesn't look commercial to me. Everything, three quarters of that, that's all residential and those are all homes. So when something is being proposed to change it from commercial, I mean from residential B to commercial, there's a whole bunch of impact that those people who have lived there for their whole life and are going to live there for a lot longer, that there's a big impact on those people and I think it's important for people to understand that. It's not, it's not simply looking at something and saying, well, next door is the bank. Well, yeah, next door is the bank. And over across Commercial Road is the wastewater treatment plant and on the other side is Fidelity and... Um, uh, the Cumberland Farms. But there is a, a line there and where that, that's how zoning works. There's a line on one side it's commercial, on another side it's residence B or it's residence A or it's something else. And that's the way it works. So the lines have to be drawn somewhere. That's where this particular line is drawn. That line to the left of it or the west of it is a lot, a lot of residential homes and a, a neighborhood where a lot of people still live and are going to live for a long time. Right. But I never proposed to build a convenience store. I didn't propose to build the fruit growers, not Surfside Pool, not Route 2 Hyundai. I didn't mention in any of the things that I mentioned or any of those things that would be along North Main Street. Right. Everything that I said and proposed was something that would fit in with the neighborhood, a careful blend. And does it make any sense? I own two lots at the top of Glendale Street that is owned commercial. Does it make any sense for me to run a driveway from Mechanic Street up to my two lots to say I can put a commercial building? Does that make any sense at all? None. It makes none. Does it make any sense in the world that this is all commercial down here? And, it, it's, and, and I think you can ask any real estate person, what's its highest and best use? What should go there? And I said before, if it was a light commercial district, I'd be, in all for, I'd be in all favor for it. And another thing I want to say is, I'm moving my business here. I can move my business anywhere. I do very little business here. Most of my business is east of here. I don't have to keep my business here. I chose to keep my business here. When downtown was more than 50% empty, I left my building up the street. I was happy. I had a very good business. It was half empty and I brought my business down here because I cared about the city and the image that it had that it was becoming a ghost town. So I took the financial risk of coming down here in the middle of the recession and I had to borrow money. First time I had to borrow money in my business to keep the place alive during the recession because I believed in the city so much and this downtown. I am not going to do anything that's negative to this area here. I'm a neighbor. I think myself and my daughter probably built the two nicest houses probably that have been built in the last 40 years on French Hill. So we have a vested interest. We're not going to do anything that has anything negative. It has my name on it. You lose, everyone loses control when I sell that property. When I sell that property, if somebody says, you know what, I'm going to build apartments and I want access to Glendale Street because I legally have access and I want to park my vehicles up there, you can't stop them. They can come in and pull a permit tomorrow, and they can build townhouses down there, and they can have an exit out into Glendale Street, and nobody can stop them. Not the city council, not the planning board. Nobody can stop them. They have legal right to be able to do those things. The city council has some control over what happens here. The planning board has some control. If I sell it to somebody else and they come in here, and they want to do a 40B project, or whatever it is, it's out of my hands. And I want to make sure that's disclosed tonight, because I am not going to build a residential project down there. That will not have my name on it. I will sell the property and somebody else will do it, and no one will have a say. Well, why do you buy right, residential me, B? Mr. Chairman, let me, let me see if there's any... Excuse me for a minute. We're going to have to pause and start the meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
The regular scheduled meeting for May 14th, 2018 is now in session. Please stand and join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll begin a roll call vote with the Honorable <coughs> Members of the Council. Begin with Council Frieda. Present. Council Dombrowski. Present. Council Shalafo Zephyr. Present. Council Feckley. Present. Council Bonanza. Present. Councilor Ottinger. Present. Council Pauline Cormier. Present. Council David Cormier. Present. All nine members are present. Is the Chairwoman of Records ready to report? I am, Mr. President. I have the uh, minutes of the regular City Council meeting of April 23rd, 2018, and the minutes of the special City Council meeting of May 7th, 2018. I find them to be in order, except I do have one question regarding the minutes of April 23rd under old business. Um, I don't know if pages aren't numbered, but it's the next to last page. Then the next paragraph, the following ordinance <coughs> was amended, and this is upon recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee. I don't believe that's correct. Correct. Okay. No. So that's the only. Um, <coughs> okay. All right. the only that correction. will be changed. Otherwise, I Thank find you. them to be in order. I ask that they be placed on Thank file. You. Any other items under the minutes? Any questions, comments? So approved. Thank you. Okay, we're going to recess. Uh, the council will be back right after the hearings in the public forum. Council, before you take the, uh, the mic again, <clears throat> I want to. I just want to uh, remind us that before us tonight is an application at this time for a zoning change. It is not for a special permit. This is not site plan approval process. We have to be judging it based on the merit of the zoning itself. Um, the rules of engagement don't apply. The, rule, the rules of the city council is to gather and hunt for information that we feel is necessary in order for us to be able to make an intelligent um, decision in committee, which is legal affairs, conveyed to the City Council, and then we engage in debate at that point, or comments. So I don't want this to turn into, and it should never turn into, a debate between a standing council who has a difference of opinion and a petitioner on any matter before the Council. Are there any questions on that? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, are there any other questions by any members of the City Council? Okay, I just have a, I just have a couple. I've, I've got one for uh, Anthony. The back, the back, I mean, cl Cliff is dramatic, but the back area that rises up, you know, how, how do you stabilize that? I mean, what are, what are some ideas of stabilizing that? Yep, so like any, any slope, there's, there's stability methods, and um, soils themselves have a certain angle that they can hold themselves up. So a slope like that, irregardless of the height, um, you have a stable slope, whether it be two to one, three to one slope, and then you put vegetation on that to hold it in place. Um, if you don't have enough horizontal distance to make that grade change, then you can put in your retain, retaining walls at various height. But that our your conceptual site layout, uh, we had, I think, a small retaining wall uh, for a little area. We may or may not end up doing that if we can get to that point. But that slope would be stable in and of itself once it became covered with, with vegetation. Okay. You, can all, you can go to a steeper slope as well and do um, a rock surface treatment that, that can hold itself uh, on a steeper angle than, than grass would. Sort of like what they did at Target? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now what, yeah, but not with those stones. Right, right, right. What would be um, necessary to do to connect, um, and, and I'm putting you on the spot, so if you can't answer it, I understand. What would be necessary to do to connect the the ground area that abuts Mechanic Street with that that top area. I mean, can that be connected? So I, like, I know it can be connected. What could it? What could be done to connect it? Is that a practical thing? No, it's not. It's a 30 foot grade change. So in that short distance, you're looking at a, a very steep incline to get from Mechanic Street to to Glendale, and um, you would have to fill in the entire lot to to, to do that. I think it's about 200 foot horizontal separation between Glendale and Mechanic, so you'd have a yeah you know a steep a steep road coming up from from Mechanic up to up to Glendale. So the practical solution, I mean, regardless of the development, the practical solution is to stabilize the back area. 
Yeah, the slope that exists there now. Statement? Yes, yeah, just to, to stabilize that. Okay. okay. Um, but I just want to make sure, just for full disclosure, so if I don't own the property. So one of the things that was looked at is pushing the buildings more into the banking to use the foundation to hold. So the townhouses like I built on West Street are three, one, two, three and a half stories. So you build those closer to the into the foundation, have bigger front areas and driveways. And I'm not saying the access, but you <coughs> could use so you would you could have a walkout from one of the floors onto Glendale and parking on Glendale. But you wouldn't be able to drive your car from Glendale down to Mechanic. You'd have to go out Glendale. Oh, I follow you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So okay. it wouldn't be a physical connection, but I just want to make sure that I'm disclosing all of this because these are all the things engineering-wise that have been talked about. But again, I won't be doing the residential part. I will not put my name on residential anything down there. Okay. You have a question? Okay, yep. Yep. Councilor Zephyr. Yep, thank you. This is again for Anthony in terms of access. How about access um, not necessarily from Mechanic Street straight up that big incline, but how about access from Commercial Road? To those two little parcels. I mean, that would be much more reasonable, right? You'd have to go through the IC Credit Union property to do that, and it's still going to be the same grade change. IC Credit Union is the same elevation as Mechanic Street, mm -hmm. and Glendale is up 30 feet higher. They have some retaining walls along their uh, drive up windows, so you know, that shows you the grade change there. Right. I'm thinking at the back of the IC Credit Union property on commercial. Road. Right, it's about 30 feet lower than Glendale Street. Okay. The, the, the back of the, the back of I see Craig. I mean, if you the property, it's pretty level. You know, relatively mm -hmm. speaking, it's pretty mm -hmm. level and consistent grade with Commercial Road and, and Mechanic Street. Mm -hmm. And Glendale's about it's about 30 feet higher. So I think it would be, um, you know, challenging to, to combine those two from Glendale out to Commercial without, using. The IC credit union property to do that. Okay, thank you. But the IC, if the IC credit union bought the property and lowered it, took out their wall and lowered it, then they could use it, correct? The, the commercial. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah, if you took that, mm -hmm. if you took that, you could do that yeah. Yeah. if you took the commercial part out and, and lowered it down, mm -hmm. same thing. You'd have some sloping issues, um, you know, to, to transfer that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Council Freeman. Yeah. Uh, it isn't a question as much as it is a. I think a clarification. My recollection of the the zoning frame time frame doesn't exactly match yours. Um, and in my line of work, scope of work is very important. And I went to all the meetings at the library. And I don't want to I don't want to prolong this because it's not part of the issue. But um, the scope of work that was given to VHB was very specific, and it didn't include what the council wanted to do for the overall picture. And I think that's what, that's what changed when it came down here. Um, the council vote was eight to one at that, at that point, and I was the one against it because I thought there were a lot of, a lot of issues you know, through the rezoning. So I think it's important to know, you have a recollection, I have a recollection, and a lot of the councilors here weren't here at the time. So um, that's, that's my... Uh, Recollection of the, the work that we did. All right. Let me go to the oh, Council Bedanza. I, I should probably add my recollection to the recollections. <laughs> um, I I was a member. I, I was a consultant to the zoning subcommittee um, that met that summer um, quite a few times, and honestly, most of the work was um, revolving around the language of the zoning document, not the map. And um, the last work we did, which was really a fraction of the whole um, endeavor, involved a look at the map. And my recollection of that is we, we looked at about a dozen or so map changes. And um, we spent some time talking about parcels that should be MU1 as opposed to MU2 or vice versa. And this particular parcel that's at question uh, this evening did come up. Um, and there was a thought that it would be more consistent um, we zone commercial and I have a strong recollection at the time that the Ward 2 Counselor of course um, who um, represented that area um, had an open mind about um, what to do and um, there was a, a hiatus between meetings and um, my understanding is he went out and did some neighborhood uh, canvassing and so forth and came back with, with a slightly different uh, take on what should happen. 
Um, and ultimately, uh, it didn't get zoned commercial. Um, although there was a there was certainly a discussion about that um, in that uh, subcommittee. So that, that's uh, it's pretty consistent with what the mayor uh, mayor's recollection of of this is. Um, I had an opinion at that time, um, which I won't share right now, uh, but there was a, a healthy discussion about that. Okay, let me go to uh, members of the audience. Um, if there's anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this petition, if you could approach the uh, podium. And please identify yourself for the record. Good evening, City Council. My name is Joe Quinn. I live at 391 Union Street in Lemonster. I'm here as a citizen of Lemonster, taxpayer, to provide my opinion in support of Communication 3318. This vacant lot, or eight lots, is located at the Gateway intersection area of Mechanic Street and Commercial Road. Changing the zoning of this longtime vacant site from Resident B to Commercial <coughs> makes sense and is a logical change for this area. Commercial businesses such as Fidelity Bank Headquarters, Commercial Far Cumberland Farms, IC Credit Union, Crystal Cleaners, Deb Service Center, CNA Convenience Store and Laundromat, Seamarge Funeral Home, Cody's Auto, Munchies to Go Restaurant, Bobo's Market, Ledger's Insurance, and many others on Mechanic Street or located in the French Hill neighborhood. So commercial enterprise in this area is not new. Traffic seems to be the greatest complaint by some of the residents of French Hill, which is certainly understandable since this area is a primary gateway to downtown Lemonster. In my opinion, Denying this request will have little or no effect on the traffic on French Hill. With over 40,000 residents and a diverse and very robust economy, which draws numerous consumers and visitors to our city, the traffic will continue. Remember, we're not a bedroom community, and all the other gateways to the city have ample traffic too. By approving 33-18, this council will again send a message that Lemonster is open for business. Communities that don't continue to grow risk shifting into a long spiral of decline, as we've seen in other communities. With the owner ready to proceed with this project, don't let this opportunity pass the city by. Key positive reasons for approval are attracting or keeping business in the city and growing jobs. Do this now while the economy is doing well and these opportunities, as these opportunities are sometimes fleeting. Adding more resulting tax revenue, which is truly needed for the school system, for a new police station, and for upgrading the LHS athletic complex, all of which I support. Developing this vacant lot, which is and has been an eyesore in this wonderful historic neighborhood known as French Hill is long overdue. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Please approve C33-18. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this petition? Sir, if you could just identify yourself. Yes, uh, Dave Gagne from Newport Street, Fitchburg. Um, as a third generation property owner here in the, in the area, um, I can definitely relate and appreciate what Mr. Mazzarella is asking for tonight with his patience, the options he's had over the years, etc. Um, if you go back to 1948, my grandfather took quite a chance with buying the mall, the Whitney Field Farm. There was no route to 
there was no 190. He took a chance and sat on that land for 20 years, mostly for the minerals, the loam, the sand, the gravel, things like that. And it was just by chance that Route 2 and then later in the 90s, I-190 came through. Um, this property probably would not have the value that it does today where the applicant is requesting for the rezoning if 190 hadn't come through. Again, there was no Lemister connector at that time. As some of you may remember, Nashua Street went all the way along and came out at the uh, Johnny Roberge Park, and Johnny Appleseed Lane was Nashua Street. I don't know if you remember that. But, um, so I mean, Route 2, 190, Lemister Connector has added value to some of these parcels of land in the area. And in my opinion, this would be the, the best use. And again, his patience uh, over the years and the options he's had, I think this would be the best use. I'm in favor of it. And, and as pointed out by the applicant, that it's not plopping it down in the middle of a residential area. It abuts a commercial area. So thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this petition?